back this Sunday morning on Inside Tennessee with Sheriff Tom Spangler. Don Bosch. Sheriff, I would like to ask you about the current status of uh, what has been somewhat controversial, the 287G plan, which is basically where your office, the Sheriff's Department, would work in conjunction almost as a, a, a pseudo INS officer detaining people with questionable status uh, here across our borders. What, what is going on with that now? Are you still using that program? Are you still working with INS? Tell us what its current status is. The current status is yes, it is still currently going on. It only involves when somebody is arrested uh, on a criminal charge and brought into our facility. It hasn't changed anything from what people want to try to make it sound like it's changing. We're not out here knocking on doors or anything like that. You know, we keep having people ask me about, well, just do away with it. Well, let me ask, let me add this real quick. Even though if you do away with the 287G, we still by law, by state statute, TCA 40-7-123, uh, we still will be asking those questions. And but what will happen, the biggest thing is that those people will be in our jails a lot longer until ICE decides they wanna come and check those individuals out to see if they do anything. So that's the biggest thing on the 287G. And I know, I know a lot of people are out here talking about it, that what we're doing, it's just to get those individuals out of our facility quicker and that's what it does. Roughly so how Sheriff, many people me, are we talking about, Sheriff? In any given month, how many people are, are you dealing with that would fall into that category? Well, these last two months, or at least the last three months, you're, you're talking about a total of six people right now. So, Sheriff, let me pose to you a specific example or, or scenario. Uh, of course, we have a, a site and release statute and policies within law enforcement across our state where historically, if someone, say, didn't have a driver's license with them, your officer might give them a citation to appear in court at a later time. If that officer suspects that there might be an immigration issue simply based on uh, the individual's language skills or color, are they then changing that and taking them into custody, or are they still citing and releasing those people? No, because that individual there, that officer is not uh, detaining them or questioning them or doing any decisions on because of... Uh, they talk different or anything like that. What they're doing is if they can't be identified, it's just like if you, Don Bosch, if, if we pull you over and uh, you can't uh, prove who you are at that time, we can run a driver's license number on you and we'll know, we'll get a description of you. If they can't give us a, an ID and prove who they are, uh, you would go to jail, Don Bosch, under that situation because that's, that's the way the law is. If you can't identify yourself, because if we don't know who you are and there's a warrant for you out of another state that's wanted for murder or anything like that, then you're going to walk away. Sure, so if an individual produces, I'm sorry, one follow-up to that. If an individual produces a, a, a Mexican driver's license or a Guatemalan driver's license that clearly identifies him, again, is that a site and release situation or somebody that you're going to take to jail under a suspicion of immigration status? If that driver's license is allowed in the United States, then yes, because there are some licenses that are uh, allowed in the United States, yes. And they sure, if you talk about the jail, I want to pivot to that. There was a lot of talk in the last several years about the Behavioral Urgent Care Center, BHUC in short, which was designed to take people who are at risk of drug abuse and addiction, including alcohol, and divert them from jail into a treatment facility. Give us an update on how that's working and how many people you're dealing with a month on that. Uh, it's still going on. Uh, we're, we're glad that it's there. Uh, obviously, within the law enforcement communities across this country, we seem to be the, the, the lead now for mental health institutions. And obviously, we want those individuals to get the help that they can. So, yes, it's still going on, and we hope that it grows even more. And I know with Mr. Uh, Josh Smith, uh, his uh, forward-looking uh, ideas that he has, hopefully that's going to help as well as getting some of those individuals out of our jails and doing some trades. Yeah, he, he's a, a, a successful businessman who is trying to create this transition from jail back into civilian life, given, Sheriff, I think he says some 95% of people who are behind bars will get out, and his idea is we need to ensure that they become productive citizens and not go right back into jail. Is that fair? That's a fair statement. And I, I think with our pretrial program that's going on too, as of today, we're, we're around 3,020 individuals on pretrial release right now. Uh, and so, you know, that's really helped a bunch too.
Sheriff, um, let me ask you a question about one of the things that's going to, as a follow up to this incident at Austin East this last week, is they're going to have uh, wands or magnetometers uh, in, in the school. And you all supply SRO officers for the schools that are in the county. I, I think that's correct. Um, has there been any discussion at all about putting magnetometers or any kind of wands or anything in the schools that are out in the county? Uh, as is happening at Austin East? No, at least not on our part. And I think that would at least generate originally from the school system since it's, it's their schools. But we do have officers, the county schools, uh, along with the school security people that are out there as well. Uh, but with us, there's not been that discussion. We've not had any issues. Obviously, there, there's always something going on. And I think the magnetometer uh, yeah, it, it, it can help. Is it going to solve the problem 100%? No. So, John, if we have time, I'd like to get into a political question now. Um, Sheriff, for the first time in our community in a while, there is going to be uh, what appears to be a, a credible challenge to an incumbent sheriff, you, by your predecessor, J.J. Jones. Um, and, and not asking for predictions, of course, because I'm certain you're confident in your chances. Tell us what you've changed from Sheriff Jones's administration to yours now and how you think that, that those changes have improved your department. Well, I think there's been a few things. One is obviously we took the officers off the patrol or the patrol officers and put them on a back on their 6-4 rotation that they were on several years ago to get them off of the 12-hour shift. I wanted them to spend a little bit more time with their families and also give them some time to rest in between uh, work. Uh, we've implemented back the D.A.R.E. program, uh, I thought was very in, uh, very important to get back into our schools. I've also started back our Explorer program. Uh, the pandemic obviously slowed a lot of those things down, but, you know, we're in the process of doing that. And, uh, you know, those are just a, a few of the highlights that I think that are very important uh, of getting out here in the, into the public. And, you know, I want to continue to be able to do that. We're going to talk more with Sheriff Spangler. We have to take a quick break here on Inside Tennessee, but we're back with the final part of our conversation next.